Welcome to Bothering the Band. My name is Ryan Bynack. With me, as always, is the superstar producer herself, Abigail Ann Levy. We just got done with a fantastic episode with Jess Callen. The conversation is great. The music is great. Just listen. And if you're in Portland, go to the Puppet Museum she talked about. <laughs> if you know, you know. Ladies and gentlemen, Bothering the Band with Jess Callen. Booyah! hi <laughs> hey how's it going it's pretty good how are you doing quite well uh welcome to bothering the band my name is ryan this is abby we're so excited to have you oh my gosh thank you for having me i'm i'm also so excited to be here <laughs> we we love your tunes and we'll talk more about it but uh just to i don't know if you did some digging we only ask our favorite musicians only really stupid questions so if you're looking for like in-depth inspiration, not this. Okay, great. I'm so ready to be silly. I'm actually like in vacation mode right now. I'm at my partner's mom's place, <laughs> like sitting like you're on, this laptop is on her, like on the bed and I'm like cross-legged on the floor. It's very uh -huh. like I'm at mom's house or something. <laughs> That's yeah. great. I love the 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 accordion doors behind you. It's very it's very it, it looks I like too. I know. I was, <laughs> I was gonna, gonna say, say it looks like Florida. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm in Portland, Oregon right now. I'm normally in Los Angeles. Um, and it, yeah, it's just oh my god, it's so dreamy in Portland. It's just like the cutest city. I love it. It's so special here. Yeah. I I like Portland a lot. Um, I feel like uh powell's comes up a lot on this pod um we're big poetry peeps so oh, yeah we like powell's we like portland a lot um settle a debate for us first how do you say your last name oh excellent question thank you for asking the k really throws people um uh, it's pronounced callen like alan with k in front of it yeah <laughs> that was my first instinct but you never know and, you know, it doesn't, we've had some people on the podcast where we've known them forever, but we've never heard their band name or their, or their name said out loud. Yeah. So you start second guessing it and, and we just want to get it right. I have a weird last name. And so. Okay. Yeah. I just see Ryan B. So I have to assume you're like trying to <laughs> keep it on the DL or something. Well, it's Ryan Bynack, and it's spelled B-U-Y-N-A-K. It looks, in my mind, it looks how it sounds, but people see the B-U. Like you said, the K throws mm -hmm. people off. I'm curious how people are thrown off. They're like, I think they think they see the K-A-L, and they think of like kale, the vegetable. And so I get, Kalen, I get Kalen a lot, which is like, yeah. fine. that's a reasonable guess, honestly. Um, but I guess when you look at it, actually, like phonetically, it's like Alan, right? And then yeah, like, that's hey. that's what my instinct was right. on. Okay, so now that we got the hard part out of the way, how are you? And you already told us where you are. So how are you doing? I'm. Thank you for asking. I'm doing really well. I, yeah, put out this record, and honestly, putting out like any big art project can feel very dissociative sometimes because of just the pace of a record cycle so there was if you'd asked me how I was maybe like a week or so ago I was like maybe feeling a little more in that like whoa <laughs> I wrote these songs like what do you mean <laughs> it's been many years um but now that it's out and I can cut it's kind of also like helpful to be dissociative about it sometimes because I can almost like look at that person objectively and be like oh yeah that that guy I remember that guy that guy was chill that guy was okay you know <laughs> like, <laughs> um, and <laughs> now I'm on the other side of the release so I can kind of like let a lot of that um start to fade um like I said I'm kind of in vacation mode right now I just went to the Portland Puppet Museum um with my partner and my sibling um it was it was as wild as you can probably guess. It was just this tiny little house 
and this eccentric caretaker and founder who like fabricated a lot of the puppets in there and collected a lot of the puppets in there. And we like walked in and he was like, oh, you guys caught me at a great moment. Like I just had a really frustrating morning. So can I just like do my whole spiel at you for like an hour? Like I really need to like do this for me. And we were like, yeah. <laughs> and so he just like went through like every single puppet and like the backstory of every single puppet and had my favorite, he had this like belly dancing one made with like cloth from the 1500s that and every single like joint in this belly dancing puppet would like swivel and move it was like some of the most charismatic puppetry I've seen anyways so that I'm blah blahing about it already so I'm doing really great after that little excursion in this very fun little city um yeah that's how I'm doing how are you doing <laughs> I, after that story, I'm doing much better, right, Abby? That was mm -hmm. an infectious happiness that I felt up here in my in my like jowls, <laughs> in the best way possible. Well, yeah, I as you can probably tell, I'm like capital N nerd, so I love to, I love getting sunk into little niches like that. Even yeah, the, I've never gotten into puppetry myself, but just being around. It like a masterful puppeteer was like really really life-giving I was like wow okay like I guess I'm into puppets now like let's go <laughs> <laughs> isn't there a marionette theater in LA Abby isn't that yeah. where Devendra performed a couple years ago yeah yeah Bob Baker I think you're thinking of Mar marionette theater yeah yeah which like hate to admit it I've never been yet which is like really so, which sucks but I'm really determined to go um they're yeah like LA institution you know they're amazing that's incredible I I like that you're embracing it. first of all no need to apologize or or disclaim nerddom here you're talking to <laughs> two people who love music can't play a lick we you know we love poetry we know way too much about pop culture and would love an afternoon at a puppet museum in Portland like fantastic cannot recommend highly enough like a perfect way to spend an hour just yeah really really interesting and <laughs> really fun i could see because oregon has legal marijuana i could see me being like you know what i'm not gonna eat that edible until this puppet shit is serious i gotta i gotta maintain and really soak it in absolutely okay well, you mentioned your new album, um, and I wanted to ask, I made a mental note to ask, um, now that you had mentioned it's like, it's out and you, you've you taken a step away from it, have you, as an artist, had to, not explain, but have people, like, reported to you about it? I just published a new book, and it's very much like that guy, like you said, that guy's, that guy seems okay, you know? And then now people will be like, oh, what does this mean? And I'm like, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to like give a book report. Do you have that <laughs> as a musician with tunes or song structure or anything like that? Yeah. Great question. Um, you know, I think I do tend to write, um, I'm not very good at writing things very succinctly. So I do tend to have very lyrically dense um, songs, which sometimes works to that advantage. Cause sometimes I think if you're not a lyrical listener, it kind of like almost like washes over you. So some, some listeners I don't think even necessarily like are catching everything, which is fine. Like honestly, cause then, yeah, I might get some of those invasive questions. Right. Like, so are, were you okay when you were writing this? Like, what's going on um were you but losing I do your mind in the orchard yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> what was that like <laughs> um I do certainly sometimes get questions about I, I feel like the most common one from this record is like so do you like do you have a pet turtle do you actually have a pet turtle like what's what's the deal with the turtle um <laughs> which I'm like yeah I do <laughs> I do have a pet turtle um yeah, she was an enigma at the time that I was writing that song. Still an enigma. She's still like a reptile. Like, I still don't really know what's going on, like, in her head, you know? But I, we're closer to understanding each other, I think. And at that time that I was writing the song, we were both still very much strangers to each other. Um, so that the book report kind of aspect of this whole thing feels mostly centered around 
pet turtle, which is valid. That's fair. I don't know many songs about a pet turtle, so it's it's honestly warranted. Yeah. What's the turtle's name? Great question. Her name um, is E.T. Um, the E stands for Echo because uh, she was rescued from a park in L.A. called Echo Park, um, which has turtles in it, but she's a box turtle. So she was like pretty clearly like dumped there. Um, and then T stands for tortellini because she just looks like a little, a little pasta, a little bite of pasta. Full name, <laughs> Echo Tortellini Fallon. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. A lot of people also assume like, oh, E.T. So you're like into that movie. You're into Steven Spielberg or something. And I'm like, well, <laughs> I mean, the alien's kind of cute, but no, <laughs> not really. <laughs> Oh, uh, we just had Steven Spielberg's daughter on the podcast. No way. <laughs> yeah, she's a musician. Uh, she splits her time LA and New York. Um, oh, wow. She did a show. I like the day the pod episode dropped, she did a show at Moroccan Lounge in LA. Nice. Yeah. I love that room. That place that is room fun. So always blast the AC. So if you are a cold blooded like me, if you like get cold really easily, you should uh, bring a jacket to sound check. <laughs> Uh, Abby, do you remember that room being cold? No, but by the time we got there, it was already filled. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So we saw a band. We did a show in LA uh, last year, last summer, and we happened to coincide. We saw two of our favorite bands there. Uh, and one of them was called the Rural Alberta Advantage. They're a Canadian, cool Canadian band. Um, but now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, usually I'm hot. And I would remember if I was like, fuck this place, I'm burning up. And <laughs> I, I wasn't. Was like, it must have been a sound check too, because I'm remembering, like, I, I think I was playing guitar for somebody else. So I like had the guitar and I remember like physically like shivering because <laughs> like, I was like holding <laughs> the guitar <laughs> during sound check. Um, I, I'm not trying to drag Moroccan Lounge. Moroccan Lounge is great. They're like really awesome. The sound person there is like one of my favorite sound people in LA. Like it all sounds amazing in there. Um, yeah. Great. Place. I'm sweating in a Florida garage right now. So you think you're dragging them by being like, their AC is too low. I'm like, man, give me that AC right now. Uh, <laughs> I'm the cold one always. So okay. I'm with you yeah. on that. You know, you understand. You understand <laughs> like always having to bring a jacket even when it's like not even that hot it's not cold outside but you're like i might go somewhere mm -hmm. i'm like oh i'm going to the grocery store i should bring this yeah exactly. along. The grocery store is the worst it's so bad. i get that yeah. trader joe's is you need i need a cardigan at trader joe's yes it's it's cold in there with all the freezer all the aisles of all the freezer food it's cold when i'm getting my gyoza <laughs> <laughs> Well, unlike other grocery, we have a grocery store here in Florida called Publix, and it, the the freezer stuff is in one section, usually towards the back. But trader, the at least the, tr the couple of Trader Joe's I've been to in the world, it's like you have the the produce here, you have all along the back the dairy, you have the the cold meats on one side, so you're just kind of wrapped, and then right down the middle you have the frozen like Indian food. You know? <laughs> totally, totally, it's yeah, it's like an igloo all around you. <laughs> I feel that, yeah. <laughs> all right, how do you yourself describe your music? Oh man, um, I would say that, um. I'm really into whimsy and mischief when it comes to music and just living this, this life where a lot of things can be really disheartening and hard. Um, so even when I am writing about a difficult moment or difficult big feelings, I like to incorporate a lot of play and mischief and whimsy. Um, or maybe that's just like who I, cause I'm not necessarily like consciously thinking about that, but I do think the songs kind of come out and that comes across. It's like, Oh, this is a very like, this is a very whimsical little song about a turtle or whatever. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I mean, I, I'm a guitar player, like first, that's where I first found my gateway to music. So I think a lot of, I would describe it as really guitar driven and almost like, I, I really feel a partnership between my vocals and a guitar um, and songwriting and guitar. Um, 
the guitar is always the conduit to the song. So I would describe it as uh, guitar music, right? Guitar driven, um, <laughs> um, definitely rock and folk influenced as well. Um, and I think I'm also just like everybody really influenced by my peers and the people that I spend time with and play music with. Um, so in that way, as I see, it's really nice when I write a song and I almost see like a glimpse of a friend or a peer in that song or the way that that song was written. So in that way, it also feels kind of like community driven music, you know? Um, I feel like impressionable in that kind of way where I love um, taking the input around me and letting it, letting it show through my songs. Um, that was that was a little long-winded but no but that was very well said and and endearing i want to hang out with you and your friends i again i i can't play music but i just want to be around we started this just to make friends with our favorite musicians yeah come on come on down to la like, next time we're yeah. there coffee on us let's do it <laughs> we'll go to trader joe's we'll bundle up and go to trader joe's get my Patagonia on just to get yeah get through Trader Joe's and then yeah take 30 minutes to get out of the parking lot that's Go that's walk your happy. turtle yeah hang out with the turtle yeah it's gonna be great we're gonna have a great time when I lived I lived in New York for for 10 years and I lived uh, uptown by Central Park and every now and again I would go there and at a certain point of the day I would see a man walking two tur two box turtles on leashes but he would like he would set them down and then let them like do their thing for a little bit and then just pick them up on their on their leashes and move them like 10 feet over this way if like you know it was and I saw him I don't know a dozen times and it was very I was like that's a turtle guy. Yeah, there's a turtle guy. Um, could you imagine if there was like the equivalent of that for us if you're just like walking and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, oh, we're going. And then like you zoom like 10 blocks. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> like against your will though, like wild, wild. I would no, love I don't it. do any cool shit with my turtle, but um, she does have a pretty sick enclosure, I have to say. I have to like give myself some kudos for like, the build I did on that. Um, I think she has like a really nice comfy amount of space given that LA city living, you know. <laughs> Who's taking care of the turtle? Great question. I have amazing roommates who are, I sent like early this, I landed last night or I guess yesterday, but I slept in a lot. And then early this morning, I was like composing like the longest text about turtle care. I was like, here's, here's where her food is. And like, make sure to change the water every day and hose down the enclosure so she doesn't get dry skin like it was just, <laughs> like the first thing I did like like down um yeah my roomies have got it covered they love ET um yeah they're the best adorable you didn't paint it shell or anything gruesome like that did you no <laughs> no 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 oh my gosh she's beautiful as she is she doesn't even need it she's got like these beautiful markings these they look like sunburst markings um these striped things um she's an ornate box turtle for anyone who wants to google that um i think they're mostly native in like the midwest um in very humid environments like i was like make sure you keep her little, her little enclosure nice and wet because <laughs> la is dry so yeah Al, uh, abby you should get a turtle you should you should you guys should start a turtle club Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. yeah yeah are you on the search for a pet um not at the moment but you know I got I have turtles close by I live a couple blocks from the beach and it's it's turtle season right now they're making all their nests so dreamy wow mm -hmm. yeah well I anytime you want to join the turtle club it's <laughs> just me and me tea um <laughs> But we have a good time. It's chill. <laughs> <laughs> no one's moving too fast. <laughs> exactly. exactly. We take our time. We drink a ton of coffee. We freak out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good. Okay. What music did you listen to today? Oh, good question. Did I listen to music today? Because again, I'm I'm not in my house. 
Wait, True, that? you are traveling. Yeah, I'm trying to think if I did though, if there was even any music. Well, okay, when I, when I, another plug, when I went to the Portland Public Museum and they were doing that, um, the founder was uh, puppeteering this belly dancing puppet, as I mentioned earlier, he played Walk Like an Egyptian um, okay. from his cassette player. And I like skipped a few times, like um, wild. Like it was, it was like really a vibe. I was like- You had to put it yeah. in, press play. Yeah, like oh, truly, truly, it was really cool. nice. Yeah, it was really nice. <laughs> really nice. No Bluetooth, nothing. It was just like putting in the old tape. Um, walk like an Egyptian and this little, the puppet was maybe like two feet, three feet tall. Um, yeah. So that's what I've listened to today. Yeah. That's yeah. that's great. And, and a, a little glimpse into your adventurous day. I, you know, just going off the puppet, puppet theme here, he should have played Meat Puppets. Or oh. Ma- Master of Puppets, the album by Metallica. Go. Can either of you name any other puppet? Uh, puppet. <laughs> the bands? Pinocchio soundtrack. Oh, there you, go. Right. there you go. That yeah, was cheating. Like, Jimmy Cricket probably has a little song about. Yeah. All right. We'll count it. We'll count it. Now <laughs> Abby's Googling puppet songs. <laughs> well, okay. We'll wait. There was a band just called The Puppets. Okay. Like um, in the 50s? They were 62 to 67. Sounds like they was all the something. Um, and then there is a super group called The Last Shadow Puppets Whoa. with Alex Turner of Arctic Monkeys. Oh, my gosh. In it. Okay. So there you go. Um, and then that's it. Oh, Meat Puppets. Maybe there's like a... There's got to be a song from like the Muppets universe, Sesame Street universe. Maybe that's like self-aware. It's like, mm. we are, you know, there's got to be something in there. You know, if there's not, you should write it. That's true. Yeah. I feel pretty qualified, honestly. I love. I mean, you you did go to a puppet I museum. <laughs> I'm, I kind of know my shit, guys. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I loved Sesame Street as a kid. Oh my god, I had yeah, I had like a weird obsession with Grover as a kid. Um, oh, that's then- fun. I liked Grover too, actually. I think he he was like uh, on the fringe. He was he was not the the main. Yeah, he wasn't Muppet. He wasn't like Elmo, who was like everyone like liking Elmo was kind of basic, you know. It's like Elmo uh, came Elmo out of nowhere. Annoying. He was annoying. Yeah. I was like, really? This one's the one? Yeah, right? The baby voice. Not not your strongest. Not your strongest at Sesame Street. Like, Did he have the first sexy baby voice? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> yeah, and the way that he... His buddy, Mr. Noodle, also, yeah, also like an interesting relationship to watch play out with Mr. Noodle and the sexy baby voice. I know that you like reference that. I'm like, oh, oh no. God, we're canceling Elmo on, right now. Going on behind closed doors in Elmo's world. Like, we don't even know. <laughs> Let's read his tweets. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to dox Elmo today on this show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, devils. Uh, okay. W- in- would you rather have a merry-go-round or a Ferris wheel in your backyard? Ooh, I think a merry-go-round because I would be pretty scared of being stuck in the Ferris wheel. You know, if it gets stuck, then and it's it's very claustrophobic in a way that the merry-go-round is very fun, and you get all the animals on the merry-go-round. Yeah, um, which are sick. Um, yeah. And usually a fun circusy song totally to go with yeah. it. It would be good to have some way to like swap that out every once in a while so it doesn't become like torturous, you know? If you could like yeah, load load in a new uh it has to be one band. of the puppet bands though. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All about puppets, um, or turtles, right? Like um walk like an Egyptian will definitely be on there. Um yeah. <laughs> I think also on the merry go round, like have you ever went on as a kid? And do you remember how some like didn't move? Mm-hmm. Um, I think there needs to just be more of those, you know, because I sometimes you just want to chill. Maybe this is like because I'm like approaching 30 and I'm like, it sounds like a lot to have it going up and down. Like, 
Like sometimes you just want to chill and sit. maybe it has an on off switch. So sometimes if you want oh, it to, yeah, like a toggle. Love that. Yeah. Well, there's some just the what... speedy then, you know, sometimes maybe you could like <laughs> have it bouncing. Like <laughs> You put on Buster Rhymes and you're like, let's go nuts. Right now. <laughs> oh man. Uh, s- there are some, I think Disney, no, Disney doesn't have this one because they want more people on it, but there are some with like benches. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Where, like, that don't have- move. Yeah. That are stationary. Like imagine we're having the same meeting, but I'm on my merry-go-round and I'm just sitting in the bench. And just mm-hmm. the background Instead is Instead of going oh, up yeah. and down out of the frame. Yeah. You can just <laughs> like, moving. You know, although you can see the background moving, but I'm not moving. Like it would make Zoom calls a lot more interesting. I'm I would curious think. if it would make us motion sick. Either you, either you on it, looking at the screen while the, your world is moving, or us sitting here stationary while the screen background screen is moving. I know that it would make me sick. I think it would fuck me up because I can't even handle that. Like in movies and TV shows, when they do that whole like 360 camera thing. Like after the first go around, I can't watch that anymore. Totally. Yeah. I'm also very car sick prone as we were talking about this. So you're right. Scrap it. Yeah. Scrap scrap. the zoom. Scrap taking music. You're sitting on it because it's pretty, but it's not actually. You have to look at the horizon. (laughs) (laughs) I was going to say that my my daughter will go on merry-go-rounds or carousels of like many times in a row and you said you're turning or you're almost 30 i'm 40 and like legit i got one i got one ride and i'm like i need i need to be on the earth <laughs> I, I need to i can't it's messing me up but can, but did you guys go on that thing like at every really crappy county fair the thing that goes nope. really fast we we're oh on the wall God. i used to do that no. but now now i can't even watch a movie do this one time without being like Ugh. i can't spin yeah. No, I don't even think, like, I'm going to be such a bummer of a parent if I'm ever a parent because my kid's going to be like, okay, it's like spring break. What are we going to do? And I'm going to be like, we're going to go to uh, this state park and hang out. And they're going to be like, but all my friends are going to Magic Mountain. And I'm going to be like, we can't, we can't handle that. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> we're not, we're not built for that. <laughs> we're like, not Magic Mountain yeah. people. <laughs> like, no, no, no. Um, so I'm, I'm already like anticipating some, uh, the ways I'm going to traumatize a future um, child if I have one um, because I just can't I like oh man I can't the lines everything's sticky at the amusement park everything is so, so sticky it's so sticky it's disgusting and you usually see like someone in line like a family get into a really like intense fight you like usually see something like really sad in line you see someone like you know like grab their kid and be like, we're going home. And then the kid cries and like, you know, you just see, you just see a really particular slice of humanity at like Knott's Berry Farm or wherever. And I'm just like, I just, I'd rather just go chill in the park though. (laughs) That sounds kind of (laughs) nice. But when we go to LA, we'll, we'll take Jess to Disney. We'll, we'll go to California Adventure. We'll go nuts. Uh, Just kidding. Give her a fit. (laughs) <laughs> are you from there originally no i'm from san francisco um but i've been in la um i'm i'm 27 so i've been in that this is like my ninth year wow cool <laughs> Very great. cool. so you went to high school in san francisco kind of i was i i lived in san francisco like the first 10 ish years of my life and then i lived in the east bay Okay. Uh, middle school, high school. Um, and then I came down to LA for college. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Well, LA is like my adult life almost. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. That's how it was for me in New York City. You know, um, I was going to, I've lost my train of thought. Um, one East Bay, do you know 924 Gilman Street? Yeah, I love 924 Gilman, an institution. I an just think that they have like um, decided to keep their like mask mandate to keep shows as accessible as possible. Um, which I was just like, yes, you guys, you guys are doing it right. Like, uh, yeah, I've I think I've played there once, but um, I've been to other shows there. Of course, it's it's truly a 
an institution in the East Bay. <laughs> Absolutely. We are uh, adult punk rock kids and, you know, a, a lot of our favorite bands are there. And so it's a bucket list for the, we've started last year, we started doing live, live shows of the podcast and we've actually they've they we've reached out to them there and they're like whenever you want to come we'll set it up so i think next year we're going to do a california tour so we'll do like oh. san francisco la san diego so we'll let you know coffee yeah, and roller know. coasters yeah. coffee roller coasters good sweet wholesome punk rock vibes at 924 gilman Hell yeah. i want to go to the marionette theater yes we, that's yeah. oh yeah <laughs> Oh, yes. That's where we're going to perform in LA. Oh, yes. They're doing shows. They're throwing shows there. Like, I know. Um, so it's, you don't even joke. You, it could happen. <laughs> it's going to happen. We I have believe. a new life goal. Yes. <laughs> Abigail, don't let me forget to write that. In, put it in the spreadsheet. <laughs> uh, make it official. Okay. So <laughs> you graduated. This is a real tough question. Um, when you graduated high school, after the ceremony did you walk the line to get your diploma and everything yeah yeah there was it was a fake diploma like you know i think oh it's like we'll give you this and they'll mail it for photos or something that's what mine was it's like the oscars yeah Um, yeah it's like we're a big public school like you just get a piece of paper like we'll we'll send you the real one like so did you go out to eat to celebrate after graduating Oh, this is a really good question. Um, I lived walking distance from my high school, so I have to imagine. I don't think I did. I think I graduated, <laughs> walked home, um, probably like took some pictures or something. I think my parents, my grandmas were probably there. Um, but then that night was also grad night. Um, so I probably okay. went home, had dinner, I'd imagine maybe i don't know and then walked back to school for grad night um which is like a special circle of hell like let's be real like it was i don't know how you guys did grad night but the way that my disney. School did we went it, to disney you went disney. to disney okay mm-hmm. you guys <laughs> my public high school was like first of all grad night starts at like you know 11 p.m which like, I am like a grandfather. Like I can't, I like hate staying up late. Oh my God. So it's like starts at 11 PM. You're all going to get on a bus. You don't know where you're going though. Like you, it's a surprise. Like it's going to be a surprise. So we like drive for like two hours and like pull up by this point, it's like probably one in the morning and we pull up like, it's like, it's like a warehouse. Like, I don't even know where we are. It's a big warehouse and we go in the warehouse and it's like go-karts. It's so loud. It's like go karts going around. So it's kind of cool, but it's a huge public high school. So like you have to wait in line. I only like went on them once. Um, so there's go karts. They also had this thing that I've tr- I've described to people, and no one else knows what this is. But it was an oxygen bar. So they had set up like a kid oh, yeah. front. You know what I'm talking about? Oh I my do. god! It was it's like a kid friendly like hookah bar. It's it like a hookah, yeah, but it's it's pure oxygen. Yeah, they're like you can breathe in like oxygen infused with like cinnamon <laughs> like infused with like peppermint it was so funny looking back I'm like that is so funny that they made like a like a kid-friendly kind of like lounge like anyways and they keep you there in this warehouse you're not allowed to leave until like four or five in the morning and I guess this was their way to kind of like you know make sure no one like got drunk and like got on the road which like respect we want that but I was like, I, you're so tired. You're like, I just want to like go home. But you get back to the high school and it's like 5 a.m. Um, it felt like a special circle of hell. I also remember my best friend at the time, like having a meltdown, like over something. So like a lot of the night was like, you know, like putting on like big good friend cap and like, you know, being there for my buddy. Um, yeah, it really felt like a fever dream with the oxygen bar, the like sounds of the go-karts like my friend like in hysterics yeah I don't know maybe I didn't eat dinner maybe that's why it felt so bad (laughs) maybe I was just like low blood sugar or something (laughs) oh my god this is thank you for for taking us on that journey I wish I had a follow-up a clever or journalistic follow-up question I do not it it's just I'm getting I, I am getting somewhere but 
When's the last time you've been to an Olive Garden? Oh, <laughs> great question. I don't even remember the last time I went. It was probably around that time, probably high school. Um, because the East Bay, at least the part of the East Bay where I was, was like suburbs, like, um, so very like suburbs 101, you know, is <laughs> to go to the Olive Garden. I have a lot of memories of going to the Panera Bread because that was by the movie theater, you know, and yeah. the frozen yogurt. So like it was a perfect eat, the trifecta. You like go to Panera, you like get your Red Bull or whatever, and then you like go see um the next Twilight movie. And then after you go to Coco Swirl or Yogurt Land and get your little frozen yogurt and then you call your mom to pick you up like that's that's like the suburban um trifecta right there i love it like it sounds poetic and romantic and and, and like in a way that i you know it sounds like a i don't know on the surface john cheever novel or something like that you know yeah totally looking back (laughs) without the scandal and then you and then I, i actually remember what it was like and it was like oh yeah like my body was like raging with hormones and I was like sweaty I like love hated everyone around me you know I was like I'm in love with you or I hate you and I'm gonna cry right now like it was just so (laughs) intense it's just so intense oh my god but yeah it's nice to just think about the Panera bread you know it's kind of it's like it's like oh it's like putting on trash tv you know it's just yeah I want to go back to Olive Garden for a moment go 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 Simply because, as Ryan knows, I haven't had cable TV in probably 15 years, and I currently have cable. All of a sudden, um, it's included. I wouldn't actually go out and get cable. It's included where I just moved to. Um, So that being said, I was watching TV the other day, and an Olive Garden commercial came on, and they changed their freaking motto. It's not when you're here, your family? They did not tell me when you're here, your family. They said, we're all family here. Oh, uh, oh, that is different. So they didn't even really change it. They just reworded <laughs> it. Like the syntax. They were like, we got to make it shorter. We got to make it snappier. Boom, boom. <laughs> and I yeah. remember like I was watching whatever and I was just like sitting there. My jaw probably hit the floor. I was like, it's been that since I was like 12. Yeah. Wow. I would probably have had like a Mandela effect moment where like. Yeah. yeah. Right? Like, I was like, did, did I make this up? I swear yeah. we were all family. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow, that's pretty crazy. So the reason I asked the the long way around this is you have you have a, a song called A Garden, a garden bed of thistle weeds. And it was just like a word association card and my brain went to Olive Garden. I went to Olive Garden after my graduation because my older sister who graduated 10 years before me went to the same Olive Garden. Abby, it's it was on it was on uh, Colonial and Alafaya. We grew up in Orlando. Yeah. I went to rival high schools and um, I remember everyone shitting on me because I was like, I'm going to Olive Garden. It's a family tradition <laughs> <laughs> after you graduate. And then, and then slowly but surely, all my friends and their families tagged on, and so it was like a massive, like Chris Corso, who's a friend of the pod. He he was there with his family, and it was like I'm like I can't believe I got like six families to go yeah, to like a- Olive Garden. So when we were there, we were family. Oh, let's go! Yes, yes, your chosen family. That is yeah. family after all. It's we're f- break breadsticks with yeah. you know. Wow. I would also like to point out, just because I had to Google it, this is only the third slogan that Olive Garden has ever had. The first one was Good Times, Great Salad, Olive Garden. Good oh. Times, Great Salad? Yeah, Great Salad. And what? then it went to your, when you're here, your family, and now it's just we're all family here. Man, I would love to be a copywriter for Olive Garden. That's what I do. That's my day job. And I would just, it sounds so easy. You want clever? No. <laughs> yeah, I know. Mention the salad. Here we keep it <laughs> real simple, like our like our fettuccine, just <laughs> slides right down. You know. Perfect. This is the new <laughs> slogan: is when you graduate high school, bring everyone here. This date bring night Applebee's. Applebee's. Yes. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> oh okay. Jess, do you know who Tim Allen is? 
uh unfortunately i don't know tim allen personally but yeah i know who tim allen is okay okay cool um we're just gonna move right past it what is your knife situation like in your home in la (laughs) you got fancy knives are they in the sheath the wooden sheath thing Mm. um and I just full transparency, I asked because it's a funny joke that I've I've never purchased knives, but I have them and they're all mismatched. They're dull and rusty. I'm a 40 year old dad. Don't know where these knives came from. <laughs> That's somewhat assuring. Yeah, I I think the knives that I have at home, so I live with roommates. So mm-hmm. there's also an eclectic collection of like, here's some that are from goodwill and like here's some like that where my other roommates or whatever um but i think the knives in my house some are are my mom's old set from like my parents wedding um so i've got some of those um my roommate one of my roommates has a really big like cleaver that they got um but it's funny because we like live in a house of like vegetarians primarily so like i don't really know why I think I think it was they probably saw a video on YouTube and was like that's cool and like bought the cleaver um and that has a sheath that's the one I can think of that has like like a, or like a guard I guess on it and it lives in in its own drawer because it's it's kind of like heavy artillery um that sums up the knives we've got some Swiss Army knives for like camping reasons you know um yes. I, I assume you're alluding to a song. <laughs> yes. I am. You're catching on. You're catching on to the association game. Moving right on along. Um, you have a song called Oolong. Mm-hmm. I'm a tea geek. I love tea. Um, do you like tea? I just want to talk about tea. <laughs> I would say that I'm like a morning beverage uh bisexual because i do also like coffee but um i mostly gravitate towards tea in the mornings um i've been on the matcha game for like a sec now and i've been really digging the like matcha in the morning um and like put it you know throwing a little non-dairy milk in there it's like and a little little bit of honey um i love oolong tea i love i mean yeah i guess i am just kind of a tea junkie i like most teas i just don't like um fruity ones or like you know and they're like i guess if it was an iced tea maybe but i don't like when it's like a hot fruity tea you know? no yeah but i love tea what kind of, what's your what's your tea game like these days oh i got a tea i had a tea subscription uh like a birch box tea thing for a while uh but it, I couldn't keep up with it. Like, yeah, it's just me. So it's like, I'm like, I can't, you know, if they send 10, I'm not, you know, I'm not going through that much. Um, but I like a tea called, there's a tea called Pu'er. I love chais. I, I love it all. Like, um, it depends on the time of day. Um, if I want caffeine or no caffeine, I love a good peppermint or turmeric or anything like that. Yeah. Totally. Totally. My roommate's partner got really into who airs for a second. Um, and he, I mean, he is like a true um, tea scholar and has like taken tea classes and is learning to do this whole Japanese tea ceremony and like has kind of done practice ceremonies with us before. And like the feeling of like, and the, the cups that we're drinking are very, very small, but we're drinking like very small cups, like one after the other, kind of over an extended period of time. And it, I, the way that I feel caffeinated after that, it, it is like, it is like a, its own drug. I don't even know how to describe it because I guess, because it's spaced out over such a long period of time. Um, but I remember it like, and we were just hanging out for two hours. And then I remember standing up and we were all like, oh my God, <laughs> what's going on? Like I'm buzzing, but also I could just fall asleep right now. <laughs> like it was a really interesting um sensation that i have not been able to replicate just like you know drinking you know my normal cuppa uh yeah oh tea this this episode brought to you by tea in general how when's the last time you listened to the fm radio probably in my parents car i think well no i feel like i've listened to radio in my car i listen to um 
I don't know if it counts that I listened to uh, like KCRW and in, in Los Angeles. NPR, yeah, so. it counts. Yeah, yeah, I listen to KCRW pretty. I often. forget. You know what? That's my bad because we we live in a place where it's like the FM radio is is playing top forty from 10, 20 years ago. Or stuff, or or top forty now that we I do, I just don't know, so I don't ever ever listen to the to the radio ever. But you're I I for I, when I lived in New York, I listened to WFUV a lot, and I forget you're in a good come you know Bay Area and then LA. You have good you have good at least better options. Yeah, the public radio is good. Um, also in LA we have KXLU, which is okay like radio um out of i think like lmu university shout out they rule it's very community community radio vibes um yeah yeah very very good vibes from kxlu cool okay i have to ask what is a pig and a poke <laughs> it's like a turn of phrase um, i assumed but i didn't look it up because i wanted to hear what you yeah you, well i'm gonna look it up because i'm not gonna be able to summarize it um okay See, I'm just going to Wikipedia. Pig in a poke is an English idiom, which means a kind of deceptive trick. It is the blind bargain. The phrase is about something which is offered for sale in a manner which hides its true value. Okay. So it's wow. a sleight of hand. I've never heard this before. And I, I work I, in idioms. This is one of those book report things where you're like, where did you come up with that? And I'm like, I don't know. I must have heard it somewhere and looked it up yeah. at the time, like read it somewhere. Because it's also not something that I use in conversation. <laughs> no. Abby, did you know, had you heard that before? I've heard it, but I don't know that I fully understood what it meant. I can't wait till your mom says it out of nowhere in like an hour. What's that? Frequency. Illusion. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. goodness. That's fun. Uh, okay, what are do you run? Do you jog? Do you run regularly? When I was writing these songs, I was running a lot. I was running so much. I was training for a marathon. And this was wow. Like, yeah, this was like deep pandemic. So like there wasn't even marathons happening. But me and my partner were like, we're bored. We need to get out of the house. Let's just like run. And so we, um, yeah, we're training for a marathon. He's much more of a runner than I am, honestly. Um, I'm pretty like gangly or I'm just clumsy. I'm just kind of a clumsy, short limbed person. Um, but I got pretty good at running. I think over the course of training for this crazy distance. Um, so at the time of writing this, I was running a lot and this is always what happens with running is like, I will get into it for like a few months. I will get into it when I'm on tour and on the road, because it's a really easy way to like move my body and also like see where I am and orient myself a little bit um but then usually like once that period's over I'm like I'm gonna go back to like I don't know <laughs> some other kind of exercise or something um yeah but at the time of this record at the inception of it oh my god it was if you are ever around long distance runners when they're like training for a big race, it just like becomes their whole personality. And so I apologize to everyone who was like around me at that time. Cause it was like, I had to structure my whole day around being like, well, I have to run like seven miles tomorrow. So like, I have to stop talking to you now, you know, <laughs> like, um, yeah, it's kind of nuts. It's kind of nuts. I think I'll do it again one day though. Maybe when I'm next time, I'm really, really bored. <laughs> That's cool though. Uh, well, two things. One, I, that, that fucking song is so great. Everyone go listen to running shoes and listen to the words that I, as a writer and poet that, that those lyrics just hit hard, especially when I was like the, it, I've been listening to it every morning at like 5. AM before the, before the sun comes up to try to write these questions. So, you know, it's real hard to write or, I mean, some of it was easy, but because you're so descriptive, it's hard to turn to silly. Like I was like, okay, how do I turn this into the dumbest shit ever? Because it's very heartfelt and introspective. So oh, thank uh, you. love that. Love that tune. What kind of running shoes do you have? That's the next dumb question. Holy. Right now, I think I have Altas. Altas? Okay. They're nice, like, kind of like, well, they're good for if you have pronating <laughs> uh, problems pro with pronation, which just means you have flat feet. 
you know, turn in all inwards, which I have very fluffy. So love my Ultas. They're also kind of like wide, you know? So yeah. Um, yeah. Love my Ulta. Another question is why are all every single, and don't give me some like, like justification or, but why are all running shoes absolutely fucking hideous? They're all hideous when, especially, well, when you become a parent, the doctor throws your baby into a thing and then hands you dad shoes. They're like, here you go. Here's, <laughs> right here's some hokas. Here's some hideous hokas. Your style, you, you thought you were cool. You're not. Everyone's wearing hokas right now, dude. It's like, I'm wearing them right now. I hate yeah. them. I hate myself. I hate them. They do not fit my style. Like, but I am an old dum dum, and I have to wear. Them. You get like orthotics though. You get like inserts or something. I, I would like- get into th- orthotics if they weren't one hundred thousand dollars. The custom orthotics. They're like, anytime you go somewhere, they're like, you want orthotics? They're like, how much is that? They're like, it's 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 like a wedding ring. Like yeah, that's what it is. You have to sell your house. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, I, I say that and I also don't have orthotics. I just wear, I, I'll just have to get shoes with them. Like all that ankle support because of my flat feet. Like I wear my bloodstones everywhere because they oh, just. Yeah. I saw you had some cool bloodstones. They like hug my, my ankle so I don't like pronate or whatever. Oh my God. That was so dorky. Whatever. Okay. Moving on. Okay. Jess, walk uh, come, walk with me on this journey here. You are walking into a coffee shop. The person, there's a person in front of you who holds the door. They're obviously there first. They hold the door, letting you walk in first. There's a big line. Do you let them in turn go ahead of you because they were there first, or do you take the W? and stand in line what do you do fascinating moral um question here i think i would i think i would offer them the spot in front of me i think i'd like to say that i would do that i don't i don't tend to really vibe with a lot of the like uh frantic like road rage type culture in la because and you, you'll even get that line of coffee you'll get people who like you know, well, maybe kind of muscle in front of you. And I just, I'm like, okay, whatever. Like maybe you're a brain surgeon or something. Like, I don't know. Like maybe you got to get to the fucking table. I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, I'm just making silly songs. So like, sure. Um, <laughs> I, I'd like to say I would let them go in front of me, I guess, unless I got the vibe that they were like a misogynist or something. And then I would, I would just like, unless they were in a MAGA hat. Like, oh, yeah, I, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, they're, I don't know. They're into Elmo, right? Yeah, goddamn them. <laughs> uh, okay, so that that comes from two things. One that happened to me the other day at the post office. I I was there before the post office opened. Abby's heard this story, but at any time now something like this happens, I'm like, ooh, that's a question for the pod. Um, I was there first. They weren't even open yet. The the woman came behind me, um, and then the clerk or whatever male person opened the door and I happened to have less packages. So I held the door and then the woman went ahead of me and she was first fine. I was number two, not a big deal. And I never would have made a stink, but it just got me going. I was like, Hmm. What is the etiquette here? Totally. Uh, yeah. What is that? I mean, I, I don't, I, I obviously am not still thinking about it, but yeah. this, I saw the opportunity to ask this question because you also have a, a song called cut the line. Oh yeah, totally. That's that's the metaphor right there. Is like, you know, let's just like get to let's cut to the chase right now. Let's cut the line. Let's like get the get to the juicy juicy, right? Um, yes. That is the metaphor. For a while, I wasn't sure that it it was landing, but that's cool. That you got it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we we have a couple more questions for you, and then then we'll 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 let you go to Olive Garden. Okay, this came from Abby yesterday when. If you're in a sad mood, do you put on, do you embrace it and put on sad music or do you fight it and put on like happy or rocking music? Definitely. I love to sit in the feeling, even when it sucks. Yeah. So I would definitely, you know, put on, uh, <laughs> what's that song? 
like emotional motion sickness or something. Oh uh, yeah, god damn. You it. know, and just be like, <laughs> you know, just like yeah. you can like go on a walk, you know, and listen to it and just like really like yeah, feel the feels. Um that was a good drop song drop i was gonna say massey star fade into you yeah totally oh man yeah, it's just sit, sit in your sadness be present in your sadness uh what color ink do you prefer your pants to have i only have black tattoos so i just feel that like that's my follow-up question it's written here no do you have tattoos and what color are I they do. i do have a few they're all black ink i have like um i have like a little floral one here like a plant in oh yeah cool california that i like and then i have a couple on this one like this one my friend did i actually have way more on um, my like upper left arm that you can't see because of the shirt but there's like a funny little jackalope here there's, there's a turtle tattoo right here of like a turtle oh, skeleton that's so oh. sick um poor et yeah poor et <laughs> <laughs> tortellini mr <laughs> mrs tortellini <laughs> um yeah i have a, i have a handful i would love to be covered in way more it's it's more just like a matter of like if i indulge every time i feel the impulse to get a tattoo like i will be so deep in debt like oh my god oh yeah like, you're, you're talking you're talking to yeah i just got <laughs> i just got a spider web Nice. And there's, there's my Operation Ivy tattoo. Speaking of ninety four Gilman, and I got a, a, a golden ticket, Willy Wonka golden ticket. Nice. Yes, you're talking to two people. When we were in LA, we we got the logo, the bothering the band logo. Um, oh, that's yes. Sick. I would. I ha I was saying this to my tattoo artist. I was like, man, if I was a if I was like super filthy rich, I would it's like a private chef, private tattoo artist, where I'd just be like. I want this today. <laughs> it's kind of like, I mean, it it is very therapeutic. To get oh, yeah. To, it's very like, and I don't know. I don't know. I, I kind of like the pain. Even I when do it too. Is. Oh, oh it's hugely. Like, yeah. It's really like comforting <laughs> in a way that I'm confused with certain people, but I'm glad that you guys are like with me. Yeah. Ryan sent me something earlier today that said something about like, when you're scared of something you have to like face your fears out loud and then it was like ah free tattoo yeah. <laughs> yes totally totally let, let me tell you how bad the elbow sucks so bad Dude, i have oh my yeah, God. I have no doubt. i think this one on my inner arm hurt it was also pretty like um like saturated you know um yeah that i think just because the skin's more sensitive i guess i also have one on like the back of a shoulder that was like the first one that i got and that one was pretty like yeah your, like the back kind of shoulder vibe i kind of you can't see it to know it's halfway done you're like god what is this so far yeah totally <laughs> yeah oh this is fun i'm gonna get a, a jess callen tattoo i'm gonna get running shoes boom there we go someone's gonna be like why do you have hoka's tattoo i'm like it's not for hoka's <laughs> I'm I'm honored. I'm honored you would get such a monstrosity on your body permanently for me. <laughs> I just I think it it's like a timeline. If you've ever talked to someone who like or like an older generation, they're like, oh, why would you get that the Ghostbusters tattoo? Like, uh, and you're like, well, it just literally like I say we've said this a lot about music. Music is a time machine. You hear emotions, you know, emotional motion sickness, and I know exactly where i was when i first heard that song or who i was who it like gave it to me and you know stuff like that and i think tattoos are like that too You're like oh yeah i was in la i got this definitely and even like making a record i will say from being on this side of it like in the moments where i was really like wrapped up in the pride and ego of you know are these songs good do they even represent who i am anymore like all the very stereotypical like i've grown so much since i even wrote these songs like i don't even i don't even need to put these out like i don't want people to see this old past version of myself but that's a really precious thing to have a little like time stamp and it's all it feels like a little time capsule like that is who i was i was like a person who was like training for a marathon who like had just got this pet turtle it was like the middle of the pandemic um it was all this stuff happening and i'm really 
I'm really, really glad now that I did the hard thing of like swallowing my ego and like pushing it out the songs, even when, you know, yeah, of course I'm a different person, but like, I'm a different person than I was yesterday, you know, <laughs> like I'm always changing. So it, that's just, I think part of it. Um, it's very, very humbling and cool. I I think Exotherm is a great legacy to leave. If you ever like, please keep making music, but if you, for some reason, stop, it's, it'll, it'll live longer than any of us. And, and, and have a huge impact i uh, love that record and real dumb question do you follow us on instagram because if you don't you should everyone fo- oh and i have to say i love jess's instagram handle it's the swapping of the initials it's kess jalen i can't now i'm fucking it up it's kess jalen and sometimes like some people i have like one friend in particular who will I can think of and he's he calls me Kess. He's like Kess. <laughs> oh yeah, that's cool. I like that. And I'm like, that is kind of cool. Like I should have kind of leaned into that more. But um Yeah, follow Kess, follow bothering the band, listen to Exotherm. Um and then the most important couple most important questions. What song of yours should we end this episode with? Oh, great question. Um, I feel like there's a really infectious um riff in ink that's very fun if there's any one of my songs you can kind of like headbang to or like do a little too (laughs) it's ink ink might be that one um that's a fun one right that's what we'll do and then if you could bother any musician live or dead who would you choose and what would you ask them in the vein of bothering the band so something very silly Great question. <sighs> All right. I guess um, I guess I would ask um, Elizabeth Cotton, guitar player, um, who I think I think we the world lost a few decades ago at this point. Um, I would ask if uh, if uh we'd be down to like swap guitars for a second um and try playing each other's guitars because she uh strung her guitars um or she had she plays her guitar upside down essentially you should just look at the video for playing it's like nuts but um I guess I would ask if she'd want to just kind of if we could like make fools of ourselves together you know like and try if I could try playing my her guitar you know like doing it upside down if she wanted to try playing my guitar her upside down but like my right side up I guess that's what I would ask she'd probably be like no <laughs> but I want to ask her I guess <laughs> oh that that's incredible and I, are you left-handed no I'm a righty I'm like regular over here yeah <laughs> this is how little I know I'm like anytime we have someone on this podcast that really gets into like uh like studio tech and like different pressings of different vinyl records from like 58 and uh, that when they get when uh, we always say we're music geeks until we meet another like real like music geek and we're like oh shit i don't i don't know anything about it it's the same with sports like i'm like i love sports and then you meet someone who like really loves sports and knows like statistics from like the 70s you're like i don't i don't know it that well (laughs) but uh elizabeth cotton is a great pool um i love it I mean, yeah, just wa- watching her pl- like on YouTube now and watching just the way that her hands are moving different, even if you don't play guitar, like what you'll notice, yeah, you know, that she's playing the bass lines like towards the bottom of the instrument. Typically that low string is closer to your face, but she's playing that low string like closer to the floor, right? And so just, you can kind of even just use that and be like, oh yeah, that is, that is crazy. Like what? And it's she was lefty. And like flipped her guitar um in order to make it work um it's fascinating fascinating great songs great. oh that's cool i love i love homework i have a, i have a lot of homework now after this pod so this is great okay what is next for jess callen um i oh my gosh i guess i can utter it out loud here it feels like i haven't really uttered it um for too many people but i am um going to be doing some recording this summer for um another like full length uh, um 
that's going to be um, at Tiny Telephone um, in Oakland, if you're familiar with the recording studio. Um, so I'm really stoked. It's going to feel kind of like a homecoming a little bit. Um, and uh, I'm glad to kind of emotionally have the separation between LA and like this place where I'm going to like make more songs um, come out. <laughs> um, so I'm really excited on that. Um, I'm also coming up to Oregon a few times this year. Um, there's like a wedding in the family, you know, so it's been fun to kind of go up to Oregon and celebrate all that, all those shenanigans. Um, and uh, I'm probably gonna eat a lot of tomatoes in my garden this summer. There's like, the tomato plants are popping off and I'm not even there. And so I was just like telling my roomies in that text I was telling you about earlier, I was like, enjoy the tomatoes. Like, <laughs> you have to sing to them. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So I'm really, really stoked to eat a lot of tomatoes. Hopefully some zucchini squash. If I could oh, wow. Something. You have it going on. All right. No no room for a carousel back there. No more the thistle weeds in that garden bed. No, no. It's all the, that root rot problem has been solved. It's popping off this year. Party in my front yard. Um, I'm so proud of this garden. <laughs> oh, that's great. I have a tomato plant growing and it's pretty hefty. No tomatoes yet. Um, and I just built a trellis for it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna figure it out this weekend and hopefully trim a little bit at the bottom and see hopefully it goes where it needs to go. You know it's that. I know a little bit. I again I I I know a little bit, but it's just like That's sports and music. I feel like if I if you really started talking to me, I'd be like, I don't know. I don't know. The jalapenos are working. So that's, oh, oh, I, I threw two. I had two today. I threw two in one in my breakfast and one in my dinner. So Whoa. it's just like my little thing. Spicy oatmeal. That's dreamy. Heck no, yeah. Uh, it was eggs, but yeah. <laughs> Jalapeno <laughs> oatmeal. That sounds good. I would, I would fuck with that. Yeah. That, that we could be hitting a trend or something. We could be starting one right here. Yeah. I love it. Jess, this has been a fantastic episode. We can't thank you enough for doing this. Yeah, Ryan, Abby, it was so fun. Such a fun afternoon, you guys. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm so, so humbled. So fun. Great. That's a perfect place to end this. And thanks for playing along with our fun little game. And again, no hyperbole or bullshit. We love we love the record and we love your music. And we're, we're you know, if hopefully we'll cross paths in the future. Well, have a good one uh, in Portland. Thank you for making the time uh, for while you're, you know, on vacation too. So. Uh, yeah, it was honestly a treat. This was so fun. Yeah, we'll do it again. <laughs> Bye, guys. I saddle up my courage to do something close to anything Like exercise my muscles or exercise my demons Be the ex that reaches out even though I will never see them I will never see you again
class when everything